just like I've added, I've subtracted. Multiplication is just another operation. No big deal, right? So I can multiply P by Q. I'm not going to put a multiplication sign in there because I've got X's flying around and it looks a bit confusing. Um, P times Q, that's just the first line, multiplied by the second line. This is not rocket science. We've just never seen it with this notation before. So I say equals line one multiplied by line two. So that's 4X take away three, X squared plus seven X plus two. Okay. Now, there's a variety of ways that you can do this, but just before we um, actually start doing it, You've got two terms here, and you've got three terms here, right? I've talked about this before, that when you're expanding out terms like this, it's kind of like each of these terms out the front is going to say hi to every one of these people inside the house, right? So for example, this 4x is going to say hi to this guy, and this guy, and this guy, right? And then the negative 3 repeats the process for this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Now, how many arrows have I drawn? Six. I've drawn six arrows because I have to do three and then I do another three. Two times three, right? So I know right from the get-go, before I even start, I should get six terms out the end. And then some of them are going to collect together, okay? If I had three terms in this polynomial and three here, how many terms would I expect at the end? Nine, right? And if I had four and three, I'd get 12 or however many, okay? Now, the reason why I'm doing this mentally is because the error I see happening again and again is students miss terms. They're like here, times here, and they end up with like four terms or five, and they don't realize they're missing one. It's not hard to notice how many we should have. So let's actually do it. We'll do the green ones first, because they're first. So I'm gonna do four X times each one of these in turn. Help me out, four X times X squared, four X cubed. Four X times seven X, 28 X squared. Four X times two X, sorry, just times two, that's just eight X. Right? And they're all positive, which is really nice. I've done all the green ones, now I do the red ones, and then see I'm not missing any out, right? So I'll go minus 3x squared, minus, tell me what's the next one? 21x minus 6. Done, okay? I've expanded it all out, and now I just need to collect like terms. And I have a whole bunch, and I'm going to use my colors again to help me. How many x cubed terms do you see? One. Just the one, so he's just going to hang out the front. How many x squared terms do you see? Two, right? There's one. There's the other one. How many x terms are there? Again, there are two. And then you've just got that constant term hanging at the end. Okay, does that make sense? So, let's have a look here. Uh, four x cubed. How many x squared will I have in total? Uh, 28 take away 3, is which is 25. <laughs> it's okay, you will. It doesn't matter. 8 take away 21 is 13. negative 13, so minus 13x. And then we already mentioned that that constant was hanging out the end. <coughs> now, really, really quickly, I just want to point out to you. What was the degree of our first polynomial? What was the degree of P? Super. The degree of... P was just one. one. Remember, I added in zero x squared, but there aren't really any x squared terms there, right? So it's actually just that. So the degree is one. Okay, let me just quickly write that. Degree one. What was the degree of the second polynomial? Two. Two. Okay. That was fine. Okay. When you added the polynomials together, what was the degree that you got? Three. This, this one here, the, the highest power is still two. Right? I've built it from here right, to degree 2. When I subtracted, what degree did I get? Two. Still 2. But when I multiplied, because you're going to get this leading, co leading term and this leading term, they're going to multiply together, the degree changes. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. My degree now is 3. Okay? Now, just predict, just predict, suppose... I actually did have an x squared term at the front, okay? Suppose I had, you know, 5x squared here. Then it would be degree 2, degree 2. What would happen when we multiplied the whole thing out? The, the leading terms are always going to multiply exactly once, right? And so you're going to have an x squared term times another x squared term. So degree 2 and degree 2 would become degree 4, right? What about if you had something ridiculous, like degree 11? You had some x to the power of 11. 
and degree, I don't know, some other random number, like seven, okay? When you multiply them, again, those leading terms, which have x to the 11 and x to the seven, however many of them there are, that's a bad way to write it, there will be, by our index laws, x to the 18. So your degree of the product ends up being the sum of the degrees of what you multiply in, your factors. Okay? So this is a pattern I wanted you to notice. It'll become critically important when we have a look at the next thing after adding, subtracting, and multiplying, which you would guess is? Dividing. Dividing. Dividing is hard, but when we get to that, we'll devote a whole lesson to it.